Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For this video, I think I'll turn this box elder bowl. This has some, some burl figure in it in spots on the bottom. Not a lot of it, but a little that makes it interesting and it's visible on the inside. It also had a loose knot that I chose not to fill. Others may have filled it with a bunch of CA or other material. I decided to leave it as a feature. Now, when I got this wood, it uh, had been rough turned for the outside using a screw center. It had a divot on the back. I'm not sure why they had that, but uh, they did. Then uh, I decided to go ahead and use a screw center again to turn it. So I used that to pre-trim the outside and to recut the foot. Then remounted it, turned the inside. Then when I went to do the foot, that divot was no longer true because it had the shrinkage had occurred between the two. And because of the shape, I didn't want to put it into my coal jaws. So in this case, I decided to carve out the bottom with my right angle tool. Other way of tools, I used, as usual, my heavy bowl gouge, always my go-to tool. Also a heavy bowl scraper. And for those occasional things, I can't live without my skew, despite how many people hate it. It's good to me. So let's make this box elder bowl. As I noted, this is box elder. By now, it is dry, although the previous turner had turned it wet, but had not hollowed it as I would have done. Therefore, it took longer to dry. Fortunately, it did not crack. I've mounted the wood on the same screw center hole that he used. I decide to keep the original shape rather than turn a smaller bowl. It does not take much time to remove the warpage and get it round again. Next, I need to recut the mounting tenon. I measure to see that it is plenty big for what I need. I use the gouge to remove wood and the skew to make the final dovetail. Then I can return to the final shaping of the exterior. For this type of work, I prefer a shear cut or a shear scrape where the gouge is very steep to the wood. Whether this is a shear scrape or a shear cut depends on the angle between the edge and the wood's rotation. Now to reverse the mount onto that tenon. Since there is always some shift in the axis when reversing, I take a few minutes to go, again go over the exterior with shear cuts. Now I can go for hollowing with the large bowl gouge. Some turners say to make every cut as if it were the last cut for practice. For me, that is fine when I'm close to the final wall thickness. Until then, I want to remove just as much wood as I can, as quickly as I can. By reversing the gouge and doing a hard cut into the wood and toward the perimeter, I can hog out a lot of wood quickly, then move in a little more for the next cut. When most of the wood is gone, I switch to finish cuts. But the bottom thickness is thicker than I want. So I switch to a heavy bowl scraper. With this, I can carefully scrape the bottom until I'm happy with the thickness. I am not a gouge addict. When a scraper will do a better job, I'm using it. For sanding, I always start with 80 grit for the initial pass. Any finer grit just means more work and less quality. Coarse grit can remove bumps and ridges that are nearly impossible to remove with a tool. As I reverse the bowl again with that old divot in the bottom, it will not run true. I considered using my cold jaws, but the reverse curve makes that difficult. So I decide to use the right angle tool with a rasp 
cutter to hollow the foot area. Then the sander width 80 grit smooths out the foot area, then up through the grits. I'm signing it with a Dremel engraver. Finally, a good bath in walnut oil brightens the wood and highlights the figure. I believe another wood turner gave up on this piece after only rough rounding the exterior. I think he missed out on a pretty bowl. The reverse curve on the upper side is not my style, but I kept it. The burl figure spots are a highlight. The missing knot makes for a great story. It's a pretty bowl. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.